The NFL season is over. We are turning our focus to Dynasty Fantasy Football. That's why we're discussing our top 20 Dynasty running backs in today's video. What can you expect? When does age become the biggest factor for these running backs? We get such a short shelf life with them that we want to take advantage of it early in their careers. But what happens when we near the end of that window? What do we do with them then? We'll talk about guys like Devon Achan, Kyron Williams, who are very early on in their careers, exploded this past year, but it's such a small sample. So what do we do with that? How do we evaluate that going forward? We'll talk about that so much more in this video. Let's dive on in. All right, let's start with the S tier here. We're going to break these running backs down, not just by the top 20, but into tiers as well. For example, here in the S tier, Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson, Chris McCaffrey, Jameer Gibbs. We do this because really... You can make a case for B. John Robinson to be one. You can make a case, really, if you wanted to make a case for Christian McCaffrey to be one. You can have these guys in any order, but these four are the cream of the crop for dynasty fantasy football running backs right now. But let's just start with Brees Hall. He is at the top of our list. Even coming off of an ACL tear this year, look, he still finished as the running back two in PPR formats, which is just extremely nuts. That was on the back of a ton of receiving work, but he's still young. He's only 22 years old. You never want these guys to sustain you know, injuries like an ACL tear, but the fact that Maurice sustained it so early in his career made a comeback to be the running back to this year. That's incredible. That, that is an incredible sign of optimism moving forward. He should still be, in my opinion, he is the running back one in Dynasty formats. Seven straight games this year uh, where his yards per attempt was 3.6 or worse. That is going to get better post-ACL, so you have that to look forward to. He's going to get Aaron Rodgers back as well, so you have that to look forward to. And the Jets, look, they should they should be going out and investing in their offensive line this offseason. God save Brees Hall if they don't. But there is a lot of optimism here for Brees Hall. He is my running back, our consensus running back one in Dynasty fantasy football formats. Let's move on to Bijan Robinson in this S tier then. It... it it wasn't the world-beating season that many of us had anticipated and hoped for for Bijan Robinson. Less than 1,000 yards rushing, only four touchdowns this year. But again, this is still a young, talented, 22-year-old running back. We cannot forget the pedigree that he came out at Texas with. This dude was being talked on levels as Saquon Barkley talented. So despite being 19th in rush attempts, he was still second in targets, sixth in receptions amongst running backs as well. That's extremely encouraging moving forward. Even though Arthur Smith didn't want to use him in the running game, they still got him involved in the passing game. But speaking of Arthur Smith, look, he's not even there anymore. We don't have to worry about him in the picture. So perhaps we're going to get less of a timeshare with Tyler Algier then. We're truly going to see Bijan Robinson flourish as this bell cow generational running back prospect that, that he was hyped up to be. We bought in. I bought into that. I'm still bought into Bijan Robinson. He is still worthy of being in this S tier. I don't think we can write him off after one season. There's still a lot of good that can be here for Bijan Robinson. Uh, so again, he very clearly belongs in this S tier, especially at only 22 years old. Now let's talk about the oldest running back in this tier, Christian McCaffrey. Look, he's on the wrong side at 25, 26 by two years, three years, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, you, there's just no way you can't not have him in the S tier, right? Uh, look, the overall running back one in PPR formats last season by 100 points. Yes, 1-0-0. Zero, zero. That that's not a made-up stat. You can go look at it for yourself. Of all running backs with at least 100 carries last year, CMC, he was second to only Devon Achan in yards per carry. He's averaging 5.4 yards per tote. And look, CMC just simply has to be here. There's no other way to put it. Until he falls off a cliff, until he gives you a reason to say, hey, you know what? Maybe CMC isn't the bell cow. Awesome in the receiving game. Awesome on the ground. Not in the 49ers offense. Maybe that's just what it takes. I don't know. But CMC simply has to be here. He is the lone outlier we're going to talk about in terms of you know, wide receivers or wide receivers, running backs, excuse me, over the age of 25, 26. He's just too good. He absolutely has to be here in the S tier. And to wrap out the S tier, uh, Jameer Gibbs sneaks his way in. From week seven on, he was the running back four overall and the running back five in fantasy points per game. He was averaging 18 and a half fantasy points per game. And he, look, as the season progressed, he found his role next to Monty as the big play explosive outside runner. He, he just fit that role, owned it so well. He was second in breakaway run rate amongst all running backs this year. 8% of his runs 
were for 15 yards or more. Uh, 5.2 yards per carry. That was fourth again of running backs of all of run, with running backs of at least 100 carries. Excuse me. That was fourth to Devon H. and Christian McCaffrey. Jalen Warren just slid in ahead of him at 5.3 yards per carry. But then you toss in 11 total touchdowns. The dude's only 21 years old. He 1,000% belongs in this S tier. It, it sky's the limit here for Jameer Gibbs as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, David Montgomery is still there, but Jameer Gibbs showed how valuable of, of a dynasty asset that he can be. Uh, he definitely belongs in this S tier. He rounds out the top four of Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson, Christian McCaffrey, Jameer Gibbs. Let's move it on to the A tier now. Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams, Travis Etienne, Devon A. Chan, and Kenneth Walker make up the A tier here for us. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, 25 years old. He's on the cusp of that tipping point of when we're like, okay, when does age really start to become a factor here? But you boil in the fact that he's missed 11 games over the last two years. You, you, you can gain a little bit of shelf life back from that, but that is a little bit of a concern at the same time. Uh, from week seven on, though, I mean, he was a running back eight in fantasy points per game, averaging 17.6 points per game as you recall obviously missed the start of this year with injury contract negotiations they really eased him back in and week seven was really when, when he started to come back in and shine there's still clearly some juice left in the tank for him but again the shelf life here for Jonathan Taylor considering he's only 25 or considering he is 25 years old there's not a lot of life left that we can squeeze this elite production out so he belongs in the A tier the talent is definitely there, but I do think the shelf life is extremely uh, more short than some of these other guys we're going to talk about, like Kyron Williams. We'll just move on to him because he's a great example. Um, look, not much of an impact whatsoever in 2022, but talk about a dynamite 2023 season, right? In only 12 games, 1,144 rushing yards, 15 total touchdowns in 12 games. He was the run still the running back seven in PPR formats. Again, in 12 games. Talk about a dynamite season, right? He's only 23, ages on his side here. The two glaring things, I brought it up in the intro, there's no previous track record. Like, this was just an explosion of a, of a breakout. And Sean McVay has proven he'll cut bait at any point. Like, we saw with Cam Akers at the tail end of the 2022 season. Like, Cam Akers, man, clearly seems to be the guy. Sean McVay is using him like crazy right now. But I don't think either are going to be an issue for Kyron. Like, you hear Sean McVay talk about him. It is, like, all positivity. He wants Kyron Williams. With Cam Akers, he's just like, yeah, man. Cam Akers, appreciate his contributions. But, like, let's be real. We've been chopping him for six weeks now, right? Like, Sean McVay wants Kyron Williams. I don't think they're going to go out and draft a replacement, especially with Kyron Williams on a rookie contract. Uh, he was drafted later in the NFL draft. He wasn't, you know, one of the first, he wasn't a top two round pick. So I have a lot of optimism for Kyron Williams going forward. I think he is the truth. I think he's the real deal. Uh, I look, I might rather have him than Jonathan Taylor, if I'm being perfectly honest, but that's a discussion we can save for another time. Uh, let's move on to Travis Etienne Jr. Then look, he's only three years in the league, but already 25 years old. You know, that kind of balances itself out, right? We're more concerned about the, the first four years that the running back has in the league before they get to that contract negotiation. That's where we really have to start thinking, okay, it's probably downhill from here unless if you know, you're Derrick Henry. What do we do with him then? But I think you, you still got another two years of, of Travis Etienne before you really have to start worrying about what you do with him. Uh, he did finish as a running back three in PPR formats this year, but it was two drastically different halves to the season. In weeks one through eight, he was a running back two, 20 and a half fantasy points per game, eight total touchdowns. He was dynamite. He was phenomenal. He was one of the biggest deals of the draft. And then from weeks 10 to 18, he was a running back 15. He was averaging only 13.2 fantasy points per game. He only had four total touchdowns. His yards per or yards per carry, excuse me, that shot down from 5.1 in 2022 to below four to 3.8 in 2023. Now, in contrast, the receiving game usage went up. He saw 28 more targets this year and 23 more receptions than he had in 2022. So, ETN, he's still this quality dynasty back, but 2023 definitely had some red flags that keeps him in this A tier, especially being at 25 years old. Again, we have another year or two before we worry about contract extensions or anything. 
but there's some red flags here after this year. Um, he still belongs in the A tier, especially when we talk about you know these next two guys here that I think have a few red flags themselves. But Travis Etienne, he belongs here. Uh, I think he's still the high quality dynasty running back that you want on your team. Uh, and I would say the same for Devon Achan, as he's our next guy we're going to talk about. He is he is truly the enigma of this tier, right? We're all familiar with the 51 point game versus Denver in Week Three, right? Went up for 27, then 21, but then missed five games afterwards with injury. Comes back in week 11, gets injured again, and then closes out the season from week 13 as a running back 11. So for me, what puts Achan in this tier is not only the fact that he's young, still 22 years old, just coming off his rookie season, there's room for him to improve, but it's that he's in such an explosive Miami Dolphins offense, and Raheem Mostert is aging out. Like, let's just be honest. He's going to be 32 going into next season. That is a that is a 10-year gap between these two guys, right? I don't think Raheem Mostert can, can hold up much longer. So Achan could be overhyped. He could be ranked too high here. But considering the flashes, the explosions we've seen, I honestly would rather be wrong by calling my shot on him and saying, yeah, you know what? This guy belongs here. He's so explosive. He stays healthy. You know, He's got top 10 running back written all over him. I would much rather be wrong by saying that than to sit out and say, hey, you know what? Maybe he isn't all that that you know he's, he's cut up to be. And then he goes on and you know explodes to be a top five guy, right? I would much rather be in on Devon H and call my shot on him uh, and put him in this A tier because I do think in this offense, uh, in this system, he has the opportunity to be a top 10 consistent running back week in and week out. It's just a matter of getting the opportunity to do so. Let's move on to Ken Walker then wrapping out the A tier. Even with Seattle drafting Zach Charbonnet in the second round, uh, look, Kenny, Kenny Walker came out on top in this backfield. Through the first seven weeks, the running back seven then dealt with injury, though, that really put a damper on the second half of his season because his snap share never got above 58% the rest of the season. So Walker, he's still young, only 23 years old, right? Just entering his third year into the league now. And we've seen he doesn't need the 75% plus snap share. He was still relevant and stretches down uh, the end of the season. It'll be interesting to see how Zach Charbonnet mixes in uh, in 2024. But again, for now, Ken Walker belongs in this A tier we know what he can do. He doesn't need the receiving game usage to be totally relevant, but he can break off a big play. He can find the end zone for you. Uh, he belongs in this A tier. All right, moving on to the B tier now. We got Rashad White, Saquon Barkley, Isaiah Pacheco, James Cook wrapping out the B tier then. Uh, I feel bad for Rashad White putting him in the B tier. If there was like a B plus, A minus tier, I would put Rashad White there, but I... Like, I just have my concerns. Um, I know he finished as the running back four this year, and I'm not going to deny his dominance in the receiving game. This man caught 64 of 70 targets, okay? That is a 91% catch rate. 549 receiving yards was the third most of all running backs. He ran the second most routes this year, but for me... Like, like, that's all good. Like, we all know that about Rashad White. But what's puzzling to me, though, is how this man got 272 carries while averaging only 3.6 yards per carry. 3.5 true yards per carry, which, in case you care, is 57th amongst all running backs this past year. He only had six breakaway runs, which was a 2.2% breakaway run rate. That was 47th amongst all running backs. So this man, like, he's not explosive in the run game, yet... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers just continued to feed him. It, it's just tough. Like Rashad White is on this this tier of like could be bottom of the A tier, but also like his efficiency is just bad, right? It, it is just bad. There's a lot of up in the air for this Tampa Bay offense as well. I mean, Baker Mayfield, he's hitting free agency. They could bring him back. Dave Canales is gone, though. He's now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Will Mike Evans be on the team? Is he going to leave in free agency? We'll see for now. I'm just going to put Rashad White at the top of this B tier and say, hey, you know what? He belongs at the top here. Could he be A tier? I think there's a case for it, but again, I have my questions. I have my red flag, so for now, he sits in the B tier. Saquon Barkley, I'm not... I shouldn't need to explain too much of Saquon Barkley, so I am going to keep it short. He's 27. He's struggling to stay healthy and, and play a full season. Eight of his 13 games, though, this last year, he was a top 15 running back on the week, so clearly has some juice in the tank still. 
he could end up on a much better offense this offseason. Frankly, I think it's going to be good for him if he leaves the New York Giants. Uh, I think there's much better opportunity out there for him. There's grumblings of the Los Angeles Chargers, potentially. I think that would be uh, a nice little landing spot for him with Jim Harbaugh as well. Uh, he's still got some juice. I do believe that. I think he just comfortably sits in this B tier. I think there's still something left in the tank for him. Uh, but frankly, I wouldn't blame you if you had him below guys like an Isaiah Pacheco or a James Cook. We're going to talk about him now, right? The Chiefs, they just won back-to-back Super Bowls with Pacheco, so I really don't think they're going to be looking to move on from him anytime soon. They fed him 18-plus attempts in six of nine games after the bye, including the playoffs this last year. Uh, he's been above four and a half yards per carry in back-to-back seasons as well. So this is a guy who, again, I think is going to be the face of the Chiefs' backfield for the foreseeable future. He got a lot more involved in the passing game, too. I mean, he had 44 receptions uh, compared to 14 in his rookie season, so they started to use him in the passing game as well. Uh, I have my optimism for Isaiah Pacheco. I think uh, he belongs in this B tier. Again, if you ranked him ahead of Saquon Barkley, I frankly wouldn't blame you because Pacheco is still a relatively young guy as well, only going into his third year in the league. Uh, And then you look at James Cook, who, look, he was great through the first 10 weeks, but things really started to turn in his favor after Ken Dorsey was fired and Joe Brady took over. So from week 11 on, he was the running back 11 overall. Uh, He was 10th in rushing attempts, only two fewer than Christian McCaffrey. He was 10th in rushing yards. He averaged 11.2 yards per reception, uh, which boosted him to 5th in receiving yards during that stretch. All those metrics were during that week 11 on. Uh, And Joe Brady, look, he's got the full-time gig now. So I think things are trending up for James Cook. Again, he like Pacheco, he's entering his third year into the league. He's still young. And he should be a considered he should be considered a solid dynasty option going forward. I think a lot of these guys in the B, B tier, you can feel confident with them because they enter into their third, fourth year into the league. You got some time with them, you got some time to figure it out. Saquon Barkley, again, is kind of the outlier here because he's he's 27. Like that's not <laughs> it's not exactly ripe age. So uh, I think his value will depend a lot on the landing spot. But again, I do think he does have some juice left in the tank wherever he ends up so again wrapping out that b tier rashad white saquon barkley isaiah pacheco and james cook let's move on to the c tier here david montgomery josh jacobs ramondre stevens and tony pollard this is the like yeah you're getting old but you got something left kind of tier right like we're, we're kind of done with with the young guys these are like the borderline you got something left versus the look you're young yeah plenty of upside but we don't quite know what to do with you yet where should we rank you amongst these older guys right uh but we're gonna start with david montgomery because i love me some david montgomery all right uh jameer gibbs he's gonna become more of a focal point right that that is inevitable based off of this last year but monty's role is very very safe in this offense if you ask me uh we know what he does well He runs hard between the tackles, and he scores at the goal line. He scored 13 touchdowns this year on 219 attempts in 13 games while averaging 4.6 yards per carry. That's what Monty does well, right? Nobody is expecting him to get these, like, boosted receiving numbers because his his role in this offense is simply hit the tackles, uh, hit, hit the holes between the tackles on early downs, get us near the end zone, and when we are near the end zone, guess what, Monty? You're getting the football. His role is not going anywhere. It is very safe and compliment uh, to Jameer Gibbs in this offense. And like David Montgomery himself, he's not going anywhere. The Lions have him under contract for two more years. That's the other security you get with David Montgomery. So I look, I frankly love David Montgomery. I know it was a bit of a down end of the year for him compared to you know the first five weeks where he had scored, I believe it was six total touchdowns in the first five weeks while also missing a game in there as well. Uh, But again, his role is so safe. I think his touchdowns are more sticky than other running backs. Uh, He sits atop of the C tier for me. I think really the only person in this tier to challenge him for that would be Josh Jacobs because I just feel for him. This was like the year from hell for the Raiders with Josh Josh McDaniels uh, firing him midseason. And, you know, Antonio Pierce comes in, but then Jacobs also gets injured at the end of the season. He got off to a slow start as well. I mean, but after week four, he was a running back four until their week 13 bye in PPR formats. Uh, and during that stretch from week four to 13, he was leading the league in rush attempts. He drew 38 targets. He scored six times as well. Like things were looking up for him. But the clock's ticking, right? The clock is ticking. He's entering his fourth year in the league. He's 26 years old. He's a free agent this offseason. His fourth year in the league, his fifth year in the league, I believe. I, I think I saw he he finished year four. 
going to be his fifth year in the league. He's 26 years old. He's a free agent this offseason. And with how the league is valuing running backs, it's it's scary to see him for hit free agency, uh, similar to Saquon Barkley. But considering this incoming rookie class lacks the this high-end potential for teams to invest in, I think some team may actually look to bring in a guy like a Josh Jacobs or Saquon Barkley to lead their backfield, you know, on a one- or two-year deal, similar to David Montgomery. Um I think that opportunity is there for Josh Jacobs as well. Again, I feel like it'd be good for him to get out of Vegas and find a new spot, but recognizing those spots are fairly limited for the most part, we will see. Uh, but Josh Jacobs, I think he he falls comfortably into the C tier. Now, as for Ramondre Stevenson, he also got off to a rough start last year, but once they got him involved in the passing game again, things just totally turned around, right? From weeks one to five, he was the running back 27, not what you drafted Ramondre to be. But then from week six to 12, uh, he was a running back 10. Injured at the tail end of last year as well. He missed some time. But look, on, he's on the last year of his deal. As it stands this year, there is little to no competition in the backfield. Uh, he has come out and said he wants to play on all three downs, which is extremely encouraging as a fantasy manager. They just need to keep him involved in the receiving game. That's where Ramondre's bread and butter comes from. So after this year, the, the future definitely seems unclear, you know, when you get to the 2025 offseason. So that keeps him in the C, in the C tier. Again, young enough, but he's on the cusp of that contract, right? Of will he go back to New England? Will some team even value him further than just you know a third down change of pace back after this year? That that's the question that kind of lies with the Rondre, so that keeps him in the C tier. Uh, you know, even though it might seem like he's a more safe option than some of the guys above him, um, Ramondre is very comfortably in the C tier. If you ask me, the last player we'll talk about here, Tony Pollard. Uh, the man just didn't live up to the height. Now he's look, looking at free agency once again. That That's just the reality here with Tony Pollard. It seem, seems likely the Cowboys could bring him back. Uh, we'll see. But if he is the lead back, we already saw how that went this year, right? The running back 23 in fantasy points per game, six total touchdowns. He went from 5.2 to only four yards per carry this last year. By the way, six total touchdowns. You're like, oh, maybe not that bad. Uh, he had 12 the year prior with Zeke on the team, right? Now, the, the kicker, though, here is... He had two less rushing yards this year than in 2022 on 60 more attempts. All right, so it was not a good year for for Tony Pollard. There's a lot of uncertainty here, and frankly, um, I think there's actually a case for him to be in the D tier, but it'll be really interesting to see because if he does does leave the Dallas Cowboys this offseason, you better believe he's not even going to be on this list in how many months. But if he goes back to Dallas, there's opportunity there. But again, uh, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Ramondre Stevenson, Tony Pollard make up the C tier. Now let's move on to the D tier, Javante Williams. DeAndre Swift, Ty J. Spears wrap out our top 20 running backs here. Uh, Javante, first year off his ACL tear, so the efficiency metrics are just not going to be there. That's as expected, but the volume metrics were actually encouraging, right? 217 carries, he caught 47 passes on 58 targets, 46 red zone touches as well, which was the ninth most now red zone touches I like looking at those because it could equate to missed opportunity you know to score uh so if they're giving him the ball you know inside the 20s there's opportunity for Javante to break off a run break off a reception and actually find the end zone right so it's not like a stat to live and die by but I at least like to consider it uh you know for these guys who maybe you know didn't score as many touchdowns but could see an increase in that department based on the red zone touches um I, look, I don't want to get too in the weeds on on what the Denver Broncos is are, are going to look like in 2024. But Javante, he's entering his fourth year into the league. He's not even 24 years old yet. He will be by the start of the season. But he was a young, young guy coming into the league. And his efficiency metrics could, could, they will, they should improve, you know, in year two, year three after the ACL tear. History shows that. Uh, it always, They always do. So there's optimism for Javante here. Again, I wouldn't be upset if you really put him ahead of guys like a Tony Pollard or Ramondre Stevenson, but uh, Javante feels like this game that we're just still playing of like we're living off the rookie hype still, uh, and it just hasn't come to fruition. So when does the clock run out there? Uh, But Javante Williams, he kicks off the D tier. DeAndre Swift, I think there's still juice and talent there, but Swift currently doesn't have a team, right? (laughs) He's a free agent right now. Uh, And it's no guarantee that he goes back to Philly where he had you know, one of his better fantasy seasons. He was still efficient last year. He saw an increase in rushing volume, as we all expected. We didn't expect Kenny Gainwell to be the lead back in this backfield, but he averaged only 12 and a half fantasy points per game, and that's most likely because he only saw 49 targets 
and 39 receptions. Both were career lows. Again, this was my biggest fear when talking about DeAndre Swift this year. He got off to a hot start, but you're really dependent on him scoring touchdowns, rushing touchdowns specifically, which hadn't been his forte. And you just have to hope that he was insanely efficient with his carries and that the receiving work would keep up. So that was always going to be the downfall for me. It ended up being the downfall a bit here for DeAndre Swift. And landing spot is just going to be a big thing for him. If he goes back to Philly, I think there's a reason to still have optimism, maybe even you know boost him up into the C tier here. But I, the the wherever he lands is really going to be dependent on how they want to utilize him, right? So I think he belongs in the C tier. You know, age is still on his side, but... Man, uh, it, landing spot will be a big thing for him this offseason. Now, J. Spears, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be on the Tennessee Titans, and boy, is it ripe for opportunity there. Uh, he really didn't have all that bad of a rookie season considering he was sharing a backfield with Derrick Henry. He got 100 rushing attempts, averaged 4.5 yards per carry for 453 yards. He had 385 receiving yards, which was 11th most amongst running backs. He drew 70 targets and caught 52 of them. Uh, both of those were ninth most amongst running backs. So it's widely assumed, assured, even that Derrick Henry is going to leave in free agency, which makes Spears the top candidate to take over this backfield. And considering he's on a rookie deal, I find it hard to believe he won't be the incumbent so the Tennessee Titans can go spend their money elsewhere, like, I don't know, on their offensive line, which was absolutely atrocious last year to help Ty J. Spears potentially. But there is a lot, a lot of optimism for, for Spears going into 2024. I would I would be excited if I were currently holding him on my Dynasty roster. I think there's an immense amount of opportunity here. Um, and if you currently don't have him on your roster, I wouldn't mind going out and throwing some trades at him, seeing you know, if managers will will sell him a little bit on the cheap cheap to you if uh, they currently don't realize like the actually immense opportunity that might be here for Ty J. Spears, not just as a lead runner of this backfield, but also in the receiving game as well. I think that's that's going to shock some people recognizing, you know, this man was top 10 in both receptions, targets, and, you know, top 12 in receiving yards then as well. That is it. That's all we got. Top 20 running backs in Dynasty Fantasy Football formats put into tiers for you all. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, make sure you do that and make sure you turn on those notifications as well. We're still posting content for you all year round here. We'll have lots of Dynasty content coming up. Uh, so make sure you have the notifications turned on so you know when all those videos go up as well. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Lucas Wenzel here for the Fantasy Football Fellows, and we will see you all next time. Deuces.